Hello folks, welcome back to See the Stories on the 3-Hour News Show. So now let's continue our talk with Mutiara Maharini or Mahari about domestic violence. So let's talk from the uh, abuser's mm -hmm. perspective, Mahari. So how does one realize that they actually become mm -hmm. an abuser? Yeah. I think the easiest way is to kind of find out after you accidentally hit your partner or, you know, kind of do physical abuse. That's the easiest way to notice it, right? But and then sometimes when you think about it, you feel like, oh, actually, how come sometimes I feel I'm kind of unintentionally, that's what you think, unintentionally kind of manipulating her or him and, you know, saying things that I don't really mean to make her feel insecure about herself so that she will do what I want her to do. Mm. So when you notice that kind of patterns in yourself, mm. Please do get a checkup immediately. Oh my God. And, you know, it's really important to remind yourself that a relationship is supposed to be based on mutual respect, not one person completely dominating the other partner. Um, I, I need to I need to ask mm -hmm. something because you mentioned that it's a pattern that is intentional. Yeah. How is it intentional when most of the abusers don't even realize that they're intentionally doing it? So it's actually, it's is a it pattern. Is it a mental health problem? Hmm. There's no like specific diagnosis uh -huh. for a perpetrator, but there are some personality disorders that are correlated with it, like an antisocial personality disorder mm -hmm. uh, or narcissistic personality disorder where they don't really have a lot of empathy for others. Um, but the thing is, it's like they don't realize they're doing it, but they actually know deep down that what they're doing will make them uh, reach what they want to have. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, yeah, I didn't mean to hurt you, but I really want to get, you know, what ah. I want. So it's it's like, it's even complicated for them as well. Like, I didn't mean to kind of hit her like that, but it's just she didn't want to do what I told her to do. Oh, but, but is it treatable? It is, but to be honest, it takes a while. And the thing is, the hardest part about treating these people is not actually the therapy. It's actually about them going Getting to them. therapy and feeling that there's anything wrong with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's the actually step. the hardest. Mm -hmm. So usually the most people in therapy are, are the victims. Okay. Wow. So, and, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> the, the other ones get criminalized. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. So is there any role that uh, education and awareness mm -hmm. play in this and in helping mm -hmm. uh, one perpetrator, for example, to understand yeah. or even the um, victim? Mm -hmm. I think definitely because uh, if one woman stands up for herself mm -hmm. and then other women start saying, oh my God, what the, her husband was doing to her was actually what is happening to me too. Mm -hmm. Just as simple as that, as simple as one friend group, you realize that, oh, oh, actually those were the things that my husband does as well. And then you stand up for yourself. It's, it's really that easy for you to recognize it. But before you have that education, before you know what are the symptoms, before you know that what your husband doing is actually abuse, you just think that it's all your fault. Yeah. It's you. It's your fault that you're not following what your husband wants you to do. Mm. But I mean, where should these education uh, systems be mm -hmm. put? I mean, as you said, you have to seek. Yeah. But can we prepare them, the young female, yeah. the young male, if not from the family, because the family will go traditionally, yeah. right? Well, actually, there has been some quite good initiatives, like before you get married now, when you go to the Puskasmas, you have mm. to go to the Puskasmas, there is an education there about having a healthy relationship. But the thing is, it's not standardized everywhere. So and sometimes, it's only one time, right? One go. Yeah, it's only Actually, one I went through that. No, no, I didn't go through that because apparently, I didn't get educated. Okay. But the yeah. couple before me did. Oh. And I asked them why, and she said, oh, you are, over, I was 30 and they were oh. 22. Oh, they were oh. young. They, were, they oh, felt like it was true. more necessary, but I was like, oh. it should be standard. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, but, the, but they did a, so I think because before that I had to fill in um, a questionnaire. A questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And I think they did a screening first before they actually uh, thought that it was necessary. You know, because I think mm -hmm. what, what this questionnaire was about was to identify whether I had some kind of depression or whether I'm forced to get married or whether I feel like this is not a, yeah. you know, this is something against my innate will or something. Oh my God, you know? that's, that's, that's a hard Maybe timing, that was, that was there was no red light I from mean, my when screening. the preparations were all done and then yeah. suddenly you were interviewed, are you ready for this? Are you sure? Sometimes we just 
try to cloud everything. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. like this is what I wanted to ask because um, since we we're talking about education, it's not always accessible. Even if it's possible, it's not. You're not always aware. It's not always close. Mm -hmm. huh. But let's let's say all the people that are watching right now is taking notes, mm -hmm. um, and maybe you could share this in the future to your friend as well, to any woman or mm -hmm. any any anybody actually. Mm -hmm. Can you give us like a five-point checklist mm -hmm. on what are the things you need to read about and realize and dig deeper about, um, you know, references-wise? Well, lifesaver uh, topics yeah. <laughs> that would help you to become more resilient yeah. in terms of these things. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully definitely. Before you get married. Yes. <laughs> I think the number one thing is actually to look up about abuse. Mm -hmm. All kinds of abuses, starting mm -hmm. from the psychological abuse, physical abuse, emotional, financial. Look up everything mm -hmm. and then look at the behaviors because they're actually very, very specific behaviors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like um, telling you not to wear certain clothes, Ooh. right? It's sometimes it's, it seems like Simple. something you hear every day, Normal. right? Yeah. That happens every day. But and then when you look, oh, this one, yes, and then the other one, yes, and then the other one, and then you see uh, like, all okay, the box of ticks. there are there is nobody who is completely a green flag like yeah. person, right? But it's when there are more than one repeatedly, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a pattern, then you should definitely realize that okay, this is something. Mm -hmm. So number one is educate yourself about uh, the symptoms, uh, signs of abuse, and then the second thing is actually to get to know what you have to do if you experience it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. most women don't know. They're like, I don't know who to tell. If I tell my friends, you know, I'm kind of ashamed, I'm embarrassed. And then if I tell my parents, they'll just like, you know, take me out of this house and yeah, it won't yeah. help. And then uh, they don't know who to contact. They don't believe in, you know, the officials. So it's quite complicated. Find, uh, find what you can do. And then the third thing is actually to always have a safety or exit plan. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, it's not that you want to be paranoid or like not trust your spouse, but you have to always have a little room for yourself to know that you are able to survive by yourself. That's yes. very important. Yes, yeah. very yes. Important. So it's good. I mean, of course, in a relationship, we want to be uh, somewhat dependent, right, on our yeah. partner because that's what we're for. Interdependent versus but yes. codependence. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's we want to have our own independence, have our dependence, so it's interdependent not completely dependent. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of makes it very difficult for us to go out of these relationships, especially if you're financially dependent as well. Yeah. And intentionally, yeah. some actually make that situation yes. so yes. that we don't have a way exit out. Plan. And we don't, we cannot make an exit plan. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the fourth thing is kind of educate your friend group so that if anybody there tells that you know, I think I might be really, uh, I might be in a like toxic relationship or something. Do not try and make them feel ashamed yeah, or yeah, yeah. or even like, mm -hmm. how come you how come you went back to him? We already told you, you know, don't get angry. Not supportive. You have to listen to them, support them, and even though you feel like you're so angry because this person keeps on going back and going back, you have to still be there because it's not easy for her. Because as well. it's not easy. It's not like she wants to be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some experts say actually that it takes us seven times going back and forth right. until you actually can really break that cycle. Okay. So going back and forth is part of trying to break the cycle. It's not that it's like, oh, okay, oh, he's abusing me and then I go back and then everything's fine. No, like mm. it's actually trying to go back, trying to go back. So that's the thing that I think most of us need to be educated about because sometimes we're very judgmental, even mm -hmm. with our own friends, like you shouldn't be doing that, you know? Yeah. And then we kind of avoid our friend, even though maybe she's the one who needs us the most. Oh my God, yes. Wow. So use your head, your mind, your eyes, everything just open. Yeah, oh. and pray that you don't meet this yeah. person, right? Yeah. <laughs> who abuses yeah. you. Yeah, you know, and and I think the most important part is just be a safe place yeah. to whoever is in yep. need of listening. Definitely. Because you never know what's happening. Yeah. yeah. You never know what's happening in other people's lives. Now, before we end our discussion with Mahari, Satya Pramesi apparently will challenge us to answer whether oh. several statements regarding today's issue are a myth or come out, Missy. You gotta have a game on Monday. Hello, yeah. indeed. You gotta All challenge right, my brain. You have two boards here oh, that you okay. need to hold up, either yeah. myth or fact. Mm -hmm. and, and we have our clinical psychologist, Mahari, here to mm -hmm. uh, deduce, or at least to uh, explain to us or educate to us whether these... Uh, Myths 
or facts. Okay. Or okay. Indeed, myths. Okay. So let's take okay. a look at the first Meet one. Mr. Facts. <laughs> All right, myth or fact number one. Domestic violence is confined to families that are underprivileged, undereducated, or belong to minority groups. Guys, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. Myth. Is that true? Of course that's it's true. true. Yeah. You know that's true. I, I, I do, okay. yeah, for good, sure. Good, good. Can you tell us a little, more, a little yes. more about that? So domestic violence can happen to anyone, no matter how privileged, how educated you are, whatever ethnic, race, uh, social, economic group that you belong to. Can really happen to anyone and even lots of clients who are you know you might think very educated very rich etc etc uh the honeymoon phase after an abuse can be buying new branded bags for Ooh, them oh my goodness buying that's new not branded bad. Shoes for <laughs> no, them. Just so you know it happens to everyone okay. yeah. uh, they so let bad. you abuse me to get me herme bags Hermes. but i get them herme bags <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was a myth. Yeah? It was indeed a myth. Let's yeah. take a look at uh, myth or fact number two. Mm -hmm. Women are to blame for domestic abuse as they provoke men. What? That's a very obvious. I think uh, women are. Myth. That is preposterous. Yeah. <laughs> no, is it a myth or a fact? Women, women are, are to, to blame. blame. Oh, this is. We're not never a... to blame. No, this is not a question. It's a statement. Is it? Yeah, it is a statement. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a myth. We shouldn't be blamed. No. Okay. It's Definitely. preposterous. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was a little bit confused. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, no, I'm against that. Okay. So, um, you know what? No matter who we provoke, we are never allowed to be abused. Like, we might provoke someone intentionally or even unintentionally, but it still doesn't give that person the right to abuse us. So, yeah. women, men, you, you shouldn't be abused at any time. And we cannot, we shouldn't be blamed, I think, because it's their responsibility towards their own actions, yes. not yeah. ours. Uh, but what about, you know, having, giving the trigger mm -hmm. that would provoke to that mm -hmm. action? Oh. Yes, it's the trigger, but how they respond is completely up to them. Still. Yeah. It's like, have to avoid it. it's like yeah. this, if your if you're two-year-old tantrums in the mall, right? Uh -huh. yeah. So how you respond to it, is, it's your responsibility. If you get angry, you are blaming them for getting angry when you're actually triggered. It's your responsibility. You actually got angry. Yeah. Right. yeah. You can actually control the anger. Sometimes in a marriage relationship, it's a bit more complicated <laughs> yeah. than that. Yeah. yeah, it's simpler to just as your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in this context, it's very bad, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No, no, no. Output depends on us, you know, yeah. whether yeah. regardless of what the input is. That's very How we wise. respond is how, uh, is, is our responsibility, mm -hmm. isn't it, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. All right, let's move on to the next uh, myth or fact. Number three, domestic violence is an issue of anger management. I think you mentioned this earlier, didn't Partially you? Yeah. Partially fact. Partially, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say that's a myth because it's not... Entirely, yeah, but entirely I think partially fact. Can you shed some light? Yes, so it is actually partially fact, partially myth because uh, if you have anger issues, it doesn't mean that you will have mm -hmm. domestic violence. Mm -hmm. But if you are doing domestic violence, it also doesn't mean that you have anger issues mm. because there are actually two different things. Domestic violence, again, is intentional. Mm. You do it so that somebody follows what you want. Yeah. While having an anger management issue is actually just you having issues regulating your emotions without any certain goal. All right, mm. okay, so just be clear with that. Yeah. All right, so that's it. That's it. You don't have any more? I don't have any more, oh, unfortunately. No. Yeah, I wish we had more time to do more of these myths and facts mm. because there are so many that need to be broken down. Mm. You know, so many that need to be uh, educated to, towards, you know, uh, both women and men mm -hmm. uh, to prevent these kinds of uh, domestic violence from mm -hmm. happening right. again. Yes. Anyway, Mutira Mahari, thank you so much for thank your time. You. Thank you. Thank you. Studio. Uh, it's been a very eye-opening session and I hope it's been eye-opening to the audience as well. Anyway, see the stories will continue after the break and we will talk about women who can be an inspiration for many more. Stay with us. <laughs>